Soft and chewy pretzels make a fantastic snack. These German Bavarian style soft pretzels are made using common Bavarian pretzel ingredients and ratios. Since very few ingredients are needed, it's the technique of shaping and dipping them in an alkaline solution that makes them unique from other breads. I'm excited to share my version with you today. There are lots of different types of pretzel recipes, including those found in different regions in Germany. Known as bretzel in German, some are made with butter and milk, while the Bavarian version is a simpler recipe made with a little shortening or lard and water. For the ingredients, you'll need baking soda or lye for the dipping solution. I'm using baking soda. For the simple dough, you'll need yeast, brown sugar, bread flour, salt, shortening, and water. What makes pretzels taste different from regular bread is that they are dipped in an alkaline solution, which gives them that distinctive pretzel taste. A traditional pretzel alkaline solution is made of lye. Yes, the same lye in lye soap, but for making pretzels, it's a food grade version. I'm not comfortable dealing with lye and it's also difficult to find. So I choose to use an alkaline baking soda solution that reaches near the pH level of lye. If you have food grade lye and want to use that, then by all means, go for it. If not, this is how we make the alkaline baking soda solution. You first want to preheat your oven at 350 degrees and you're going to line a baking sheet. I'm just using a small one with parchment paper here. And then you're gonna need 45 grams, which is a quarter of a cup of baking soda. And you're just gonna sprinkle it evenly over the liner. On the pH scale of zero to 15, the pH of baking soda is between eight and nine. The lower the pH, the more acidic. So lye is on the high end between 11 and 14. So baking the baking soda increases the pH of baking soda to near 11, which is closer to the lye pH. Once you have your baking soda on the paper, you're gonna place this in the oven and you're gonna bake for one hour. Once your baked baking soda comes out of the oven, just set it aside and let it cool. You're gonna simply just store in a container. I'm just gonna fold up the paper and then just pour it in a container like that. And then you can seal the container. You can use a baggie if you want and you can store this for weeks. If you're not gonna make pretzels now, don't worry, you have baking soda, your alkaline solution ready to go. If you wanna make several batches of pretzels, bake a couple batches of baking soda at the same time and then just store them in different containers or just measure out what you need when it's time. To activate these, you wanna measure out the total amount of water, which is 295 milliliters, which is one and a quarter cups. You wanna heat in the microwave for about 30 seconds to reach that 100 to 110 degree mark. In a small bowl, we're gonna add seven grams, which is one package of yeast and five grams, one teaspoon of brown sugar. Mix them together. From the water that we've measured out, we're gonna add 59 milliliters, which is about a quarter of a cup, and you can just eyeball that. We're gonna stir the yeast and the brown sugar until they've dissolved. Set the yeast aside for about 10 minutes to become bubbly and frothy. To make the pretzel dough, to the bowl of a stand mixer, we're going to sift 480 grams, which is four cups of bread flour. I like to use bread flour in this recipe because it has a higher gluten and the higher gluten content will produce a chewier bread. If you don't have a stand mixer, you'd rather just do this by hand, just use a large bowl. Flour is all sifted. To the flour, we're gonna add nine grams, one and a half teaspoons of salt. And so we're gonna attach our paddle attachment here. I'm gonna turn the machine on low just to combine the flour and the salt. To the flour salt mixture, we're gonna add 30 grams, which is two and a half tablespoons of shortening. And we're gonna run the machine on low to medium to break up the shortening and mix into the flour. We're gonna switch out the attachments and move to the dough hook. With the machine on low and our yeast activated, we're gonna slowly pour the yeast into the mixer. We're also gonna pour in the remaining water from which we took a quarter of a cup to activate the yeast. You're gonna let the machine knead for eight to 10 minutes. You can scrape down the bowl periodically to ensure the flour is released from the sides and gets mixed in with the liquid. You're looking for the dough to start pulling away from the bowl. If you have too much flour or a little bit of flour that's at, hanging out at the bottom of the bowl, then go ahead and add a tablespoon of water at a time until your dough reaches a tacky consistency. Okay, you can tell it's already pulling away from the bowl and it's hanging out around the dough hook. 
no flowers left behind, so we're just going to knead until our time is up. So go ahead and remove it from the dough hook if you were kneading by hand. Then go ahead and mound the dough. Regardless, put the dough back in the bowl. It's a nice tacky dough. So just in the bowl, we're going to cover the bowl. You can towel, plastic wrap, whatever. We're going to allow the dough to sit for five minutes. That's it. If you want to make the dough a day ahead of time, you can. It's just not the Bavarian style of doing it. They move through the dough very quickly to make the pretzels without any rise time. But if you do want to make it ahead of time, I've done so and I've stored it in the fridge overnight covered and it was fine. Just store it in a large enough bowl so it can rise because it will rise and likely double in size in the fridge. Let's divide and shape the pretzels. Scoop out the dough onto an unfloured work surface. An unfloured work surface provides friction, making it easier to roll out and shape the dough. We're going to divide the dough into 10 equal parts. You can eyeball this or you can weigh them. So the total weight of my dough is 828 grams, so that's going to be between 82 and 83 grams for each piece, and I'll do some, half will 83 and half 82, and that should give me equal, pretty equal pieces. For me, since I'm weighing them, I'm still going to divide into five pieces, and then I will take away and add dough based on their weight as needed. Okay, all 10 of mine are divided. And since I had to do some piecemealing of the dough, I've got some pieces that are just hanging out the top, so I'm just gonna cover them up, make them more of a smooth round. So then we're gonna roll each of these into about the size of a bratwurst sausage. And that just sort of gets that roll that we're gonna need, because we're gonna be rolling these out pretty thin. And so this allows them to get used to a rolled shape. So start out with just a quick little roll of each one. And as you roll them out, place them on a platter, like so, and then cover them up with a towel so that they don't dry out. And we'll continue to do that for all 10 of our pretzel dough. See, so like so, and you can place them side by side. Just keep them covered. It's my last roll. All right, so all 10 are there. So let's cover them up, set them aside. We're gonna prepare two baking sheets by lining each with parchment paper. You can also use a silicone mat, and we're going to set them aside. We're not letting these rest at all, so go ahead and take the first one that you rolled out from the plate, cover the remaining. We're going to keep an unflowered work surface, and we're going to roll each pretzel into about a 20 to 22 inch rope. We're going to taper the ends. If you want a true German Bavarian pretzel style, you can leave the middle of the rope, which is this part here, you can leave it thicker and really make these ends super thin. It's up to you why you want your pretzel to look. All right, that's about 22 inches for me. The easiest way to make a pretzel is to take a rope, you're gonna shape it into a U, like so. You're gonna twist the ends twice, then you're going to pull them down and seal the ends to the edges of the bottom of the U, like so. For Christians, it's common to make pretzels around Easter as the pretzel shape can symbolize a praying person. So it's like the knot here represents folded arms in a prayer. The three holes represent the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These would be fun to make with your kiddos in preparation for Easter. Once you've made your pretzel, place it on the baking sheet, like so. Cover and set it aside. We're gonna repeat with all the pretzel dough, all 10. It's the same process, roll out to 20 to 22 inches. So here's a little fun fact. There was a time when pretzels were hidden on Easter morning like eggs are in the United States today. So pretzels are actually very significant to Easter time, at least for the Christian faith. One more time. Are you cross twice? Fold down, seal at the base of the U. That's your pretzel. I have one batch of pretzels done, so that's a little bit more than half. Now place these in the freezer for 30 minutes or the refrigerator for at least an hour. The colder these are, the better, because they're pretty flimsy right now, as you can see. Okay, this is my last pretzel, and I wanted to show you something. When you twist them, right, and you bring them down, Use your fingers to push up the top part of your pretzel to give a pretty space so that you have the defined 
three holes. I switched baking sheets for a smaller one because it turns out since I only had four to put on here, I didn't really need that big one. But also these are not gonna rise because we're gonna put them in the freezer just like this and they're gonna freeze as is. If you found that your pretzels have retracted a little bit, you can go back and widen the holes. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees. For the dipping solution, you're going to need a wide mouth bowl or stock pot. And to that, we're gonna add our baked baking soda. If you know how to use the lye solution and you want to use that, then go ahead and prepare it. And we're gonna pour in four cups of cold water and we're gonna stir the baking soda until it is dissolved and the water is clear. So the heated baking soda with the water is what creates that alkaline solution that's near a pH of 11. It may take a few minutes, but your solution should become clear. Take one pan of pretzels out of the freezer and notice that they stayed their shape when they were frozen. So notice how easy they are to manipulate. That's why I like to freeze them. So you're gonna drop one. You could do two at a time. I'm probably gonna do one here in the solution and you're gonna let it sit there for 30 seconds on each side. The solution is what gives the dark coloring and that pretzel flavor. When your 30 seconds are up on one side, then use two slotted spoons to flip over the dough for another 30 seconds. And I like the slotted spoons because when we lift it in and out, we can drain the liquid off of the pretzel through the slats. You could use forks if you'd like. You don't want to touch the alkaline solution because it is alkaline and it's not good on the skin. Once your minute is up, then notice how easily using two utensils drains the pretzel and allows us to put it back in its spot on the paper. And then we add our second pretzel. And while that one is soaking, I like to salt. You can use two types of salt. Coarse is traditional to sprinkle over the top while they're wet so that the salt sticks to them. I also have a flake salt that I like to use. This is like a bagel salt. You could use all sorts of flavorings here. You could use different seeds like poppy seeds are common in German speaking countries, as well as pumpkin, nigella, caraway. You could use onion flakes, everything bagel seasoning. You can even grate some like Parmesan cheese on top as well. Don't forget to flip for your 30 second mark. For sweet pretzels, you could sprinkle on some cinnamon and sugar, or you can leave them as they are and not use any topping. For this one, I wanna sprinkle on just some flake sea salt. And then we continue until we've dipped all of our pretzels and we've covered them with whatever toppings that you want. In some German speaking countries, pretzels are commonly found at weddings because they symbolize good luck and represent tying the knot, so to speak. And in fact, a wedding couple will use it like a wishbone where they pull on each side of the pretzel. Pretzels are also good to give us gifts to represent good luck. We're gonna bake our pretzels in the oven for 25 minutes or until dark brown. Pretzels are hot in the oven. We're gonna let them cool for a few moments and then we'll take a closer look. Okay, do you come off the pan? Notice that the salt sticks because they were wet when we put the salt on. Notice they're nice and brown on both sides. So they do have that darker brown coloring thanks to the alkaline solution in the baking soda. Now, if you were to use the lye solution, they would look shinier. So that's a downside by not using the lye solution. They're not gonna have that shine to them. They will have the pretzel flavor. So the salt is clearly visible. I actually like the look of the flake salt because you can see it, it's more defined than the coarse salt that's typically on a pretzel. Some regions in Germany will slice the bottom of the pretzel in order for it to expand. Whereas in the Bavarian style, usually they leave the pretzel to split wherever it wants to split. So that's what we've done here. If you were to add any other seasoning to the top, that would be just as visible. So these pretzels are like the Bavarian style. You've got a thin connecting there. So it's gonna be a little crunchy on those ends there that are attached to the bottom. Got a little bit of thicker bottom here. So we'll tear into it. So the outer edges are very crispy. Notice the pull from the tender, chewy bread on the inside. So what do you expect from a soft pretzel? Crunchy outside, chewy inside. The chewy center is a result of the high gluten bread flour. Store baked pretzels sealed in a bag or container at room temperature for up to three days. For longer storage, place in a sealed bag or container in the freezer for several months. Remove as desired and heat in the microwave until heated through. These pretzels are fun to make, 
and a great activity to do with kids, particularly around Christian holidays like Easter or other celebrations. Make them anytime you're craving soft pretzels and enjoy them as a snack any time of day. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, go back to the world.